Good morning. It's a beautiful... What day is it today? Saturday. Saturday morning. Uh, or is it Sunday? No, it's Sunday. I don't know. I don't know what day it is. It's a Sunday morning uh, in Vancouver. Right now I'm in the uh, River Dif District down by the Fraser River where uh, my daughter and I, daughters and I, actually have lived for the past 25 years. I moved down here when I was a single mom, twice over. Uh, the first time I moved here was single mom the first time, and the second time I was already here. Uh, the place I moved into is a beautiful townhome run by Red Door Housing Society. And um, it was a haven for me when I first moved here. Uh, it was pretty hard to make money and work and pay the rent when I was a mom of two young children. So Red Door Housing Society was a place where I could come and, you know, only pay a portion, you know, what everybody should be paying, about 25% of their income towards rent. So it allowed me a safe place to be, which I think was a saving grace for me. I was able to launch my own business, run my own business and do pretty well in life. And um, I'm thankful, so very thankful for that. But today, um, <coughs> this video is not going to be as positive. And I'm going to give a warning ahead of time to the people who know me. Just know that I have got my daughter and I, <coughs> sorry, choking now, out of this situation. Uh, I've had to relocate us at our expense, my expense. Uh, thankfully, I've done well over the years, so I've been able to do that. But it is causing some strain. Um, so know that I'm not currently living in this circumstance. I'm actually just showing everyone live and I'm doing a live on purpose. It's to timestamp to just show the reality, to show my face, to kind of be out there and show what's happening. Um, as well as let people know there is a class action lawsuit now against Red Door Housing and BC Housing is involved. And I'm not going to go into too much detail about it other than to let you know there is a class action. And so I'm doing this video mostly for those purposes, just to document I've been keeping evidence for the past year. Uh, it's been mounting and mounting and mounting. And the things that uh, we've had to go through are pretty, pretty horrific. So to remind you again, anyone who knows me, I have gotten myself out of that situation. My daughter and I are staying somewhere now that's uh, healthy, safe. <laughs> and we're just here uh, in the city just to do her appointments. Um, she does have an active disability. She was diagnosed with seizures a couple of years ago, uh, which can be triggered by a variety of things. And the reason I bring this up is because it's kind of important when I tell you what's going on in this situation and I explain uh, the current living situations and what Red Door Housing has kind of forced tenants to live under. Again, I'm going to say it again. We are out of this home at the present time. We've had no choice. Uh, we were not offered relocation initially. Uh, the only relocation we were offered was in districts out of our home. Surrey, places far away from our community and our doctors and everything. Uh, so I did not take that. I did ask for reduced rent just to support financially while we made a transition that was not offered. So I just want to let you in on what we've been asked to live in under the conditions we've been asked to live in and also let you know that this is actually not a uh, one time case scenario. This is actually I think the third or the fourth complex that has been retrofitted as you can see there's whatever they call those things there are envelopes over all of the buildings right now they've been here for probably about five six months i think this has been done mold retrofits um as they're known on the record uh ladner willows is another one cougar creek there's other areas that red door housing manages that have been going through these retrofits and i found a group of women who have been fighting this situation for a couple years already that I didn't know about, uh, but only came into light when I just started to do some more my own research and saw some um, articles online about the situation before the news was censored, of course. But anyway, I digress. Um, so this has been an ongoing situation. And to before I give you a tour here, I'm going to let you know that for the past 15 years, any maintenance on this unit has been my responsibility. Uh, I've kept it up pretty well. Um, I've made sure that at my expense, I've made sure everything works. Everything's been working well. Um, any repairs, breakdowns, toilets, anything that is usually a landlord's duty and obligation actually legally to do, I've had to do. 
Uh, the carpets in the unit have not been replaced for over 25, 20, 22 years. Something I've asked for repeatedly. I had to paint the unit myself. Uh, I did also do all the lawn and garden and maintenance. So this is something that I've known has been coming, but kept to myself and just did my own thing and thought I was helping out Red Door Society because maybe they had limited funding, but it's gotten worse and worse and worse and gotten to the point now where I have to expose the things that I've been seeing. And this is a live just to show my situation. So now that um, I've given people an opportunity to join, I'm gonna turn the camera around. I'm just gonna take you a tour for a tour around this home to show you what state we have been expected to live in. And keep in mind, this is my daughter who has a disability. And what has happened is then during the course of this retrofit, they've been doing a lot of work inside the units. That's very invasive. A lot of the times they ask us to move everything from the walls so they can work on all the windows, which you'll actually see the state of the home. And it was not livable for my daughter. It was triggering her seizure, the stress, all of it. Um, so because we were making demands, I guess, as management saw it, to accommodate my daughter's disability. Uh, halfway through the project, they stopped. They basically left the unit in, basically partially demolished, unfinished. And they're not letting us know when they'll be finishing it. So we are expected to live in the state it's in that you're going to see in a minute for an indefinite amount of time. We don't even know. And they're also pushing the relocation on us now, again, to other units, uh, perhaps in the complex or elsewhere. Yet, meanwhile, I've already relocated us at my own expense. So again, they're not really offering things that are going to help us. And so even though my daughter and I have basically got ourselves safe from this environment for the time being, I'm still fighting the cause for people that don't have those resources, like my neighbor who also is, has a disability and her son has a disability and my other neighbor and other neighbors and other neighbors. So anyway, I'm gonna turn the, the camera around and we're gonna take a little tour uh, of the units and I'm gonna explain basically what you see is what you get. And this is what has been expected of us and to live in for, again, indefinite amount of time. Here we go. So there is the envelope we're in, which is pretty standard. I mean, if any unit is, rain, you know, Vancouver, <laughs> the leaky condo thing continues. These units are old. Uh, they had a retrofit probably about, ooh, I'd say 17 years ago. A lot of activity here for about a year. Lived through that. It was pretty trying, but it was never too bad. Um, they replaced things like put concrete pillars here instead of wood. This retrofit's been pretty extensive. The, the uh, decks have been replaced. Um, the wood has been taken off the deck platforms and just the plastic covering has been put there. All the windows have been replaced. Siding has been replaced. So this uh, scaffolding you see here has been up for probably about six months. So tenants are living in this uh, and it's pretty dismal when I show you, <laughs> I go in there. Um, here we go up our front stairs and this is basically again what everybody's expected to live under at the time. This uh, tenant has actually been relocated to another unit on site because they are completely redoing her entire unit. Apparently they found mold on the outside walls, so she had to relocate. Uh, these two are unknown. I'm not sure. I think we're all in, in residence still. And this is our unit, which we haven't been living in just because we, for our health and safety, we don't feel it's um, a good place for us to be living. So you walk in the door. First thing I'm going to show you is how dark and dismal it is in here. I'm hoping the camera can pick it up. We have to have lights on during the day. And then the first thing you'll see is exposed wiring. This is again the halfway through the work of putting an HVAC system in that has now been stopped indefinitely. Uh, and this is primarily due to me um, vocalizing on behalf of my daughter to get clear instructions about where to move furniture. As you can see, <laughs> furniture is everywhere because they've had to get to windows and walls. And the notices that we get from the construction company come you know, really, they're not very well organized. They'll come in and they'll ask you to move everything. And then two months later, they'll ask you to move everything again. So you can't really have your furniture put back into place because constantly they're coming in here to work um, one step after another step after another step. So pretty much this work needed to be done in empty units. It's made it pretty much unlivable. So this is where we were left last. Um, windows were installed. The HVAC system was put in. Uh, and in my questioning to you know, try to figure out how to work around the next work, which was going to be about 10 days, where all of this furniture you see here had to come to the middle of the floor. All these walls had to be kept bare. All the areas where there needs to be more drywall was supposed to be 
cleared of stuff. All the windows around the windows was to be cleared of stuff. That includes the kitchen. So we've got that window there. You can see there's no drywall completion there. It's just the windows in. Those are paper blinds. Those are not real blinds. And this window here. So we were given a 10 day entry notice to have all this stuff furniture into the middle of the room. And this was after we thought we were kind of done for a while and we could go back to living and my daughter could be here and be comfortable. So when I asked them questions about, well, how long is this going to take? And is, if there's going to be painting, can we not do the painting? Because my daughter will have seizures. Uh, the fumes will trigger them. And this questioning of mine led to the abrupt halt and stop of any work on our units. And we were told that they aren't going to do any work anymore. They're leaving us like this, as you see it. Uh, originally, they wrote officially it was going to be February, perhaps, but now they don't know. And then they said they were going to move us completely out. And we will be out of this house for four to six months or four to six weeks, but they don't know. So really, it's all just kind of a big question mark. Pretty much everything they've said so far has not panned out to be truthful. So I'm not holding my breath. Again, we are out of this unit. We're not actually living in this unit right now because, as you can see, it's not very livable. This is basically all of our furniture pushed aside. And I'll show you another reason why furniture is all out in the rooms like that. Because the pantry, we were told to completely entry and empty. So <laughs> there's the HVAC unit. And so all of our stuff, again, was piled over into corners to accommodate the work. Uh, we knew they were going to be coming back, so we kind of left it there. But now, again, we don't know when they're coming back, if they're coming back. And that's what we're left to live with for the time being, indefinitely. We don't know until when. Um, there is mold in the units. You can see some holes there that have not been fixed. Those holes were actually done by me. Uh, to mitigate some kind of airflow in this area here because you can see there's water damage uh, and I tried to do my best but when I contacted Red Door Housing to do something about it nothing was done which is pretty much standard so I stopped working on it I'm like I'm not replacing that whole ceiling on my own expense not especially now um, okay so let's actually go to the upstairs unit I think I've shown you everything down here the most important oh is exposed wiring and I have one other thing to put on record here. The construction workers, when they were working here, drilled through the hole. Well, I've drilled a hole through the wall, damaged this heater here. Uh, so it flipped the circuit breaker. Now, when we called management, they said, well, are you sure you haven't done any rewiring yourself? <laughs> Which I, I'm only saying that because I thought that was really funny. I'm like, yeah, I'm pretty good, but I'm not that good. Uh, electrician, they sent one in. He closed off the uh, thermostat. And we are still left with no heat. So as of winter, I think they still expect us to be living here with no heat down in this room as well, as well as all this here. And I'm going to say for the benefit of those who are just joining or you didn't see the first preamble, we are not living here right now. I had to relocate my daughter at my own expense to get us out of this because Red Door Housing is pretty much not keeping these units livable for us. So I'm gonna go upstairs, show you some of the carpets that I was talking about have not been replaced for 22 years. I've been asking for this for years. It's very unhealthy, unsanitary. I actually replaced the flooring in the living room at my own expense uh, about six years ago, seven years ago. Uh, it was a lot healthier. We pulled that carpet up and there was mold and dust and all sorts of stuff. It was really bad. Um, so this now, this was my own expense. I never was reimbursed for this. I did it for my own health and safety, ours. And then I asked management to replace this carpet um, multiple times. And when the retrofit was happening, I did a request again. Well, why don't you do the carpet when you're doing everything else? Because you'll be pulling the unit apart. And I was told, well, not until after the retrofit. And we highly doubt it because BC Housing will not fund, fund it. We don't have the money for that. I was flat out told that that they didn't have money to replace old carpets of 22 years in a unit. So I'm gonna take you again upstairs now. Show you what we're living with and what was left. So again, we are left in the bathroom, completely unfinished. This is now left indefinitely. They've told us that they will not finish this um, because we were being too demanding, quote unquote, with my daughter's disability, that we can't just have everyone in the house doing whatever they want, whenever they want. We just need to have a little more boundaries and some clarification on entries and what they're going to be doing. But that was too much for them. So uh, I'm suspect it was punitive, the reasons they stopped this work. 
or to avoid liability because I was asking questions about liability. Things have been broken, personal items in my home. Doors have been left open. We've come home and the main door was left open. Uh, here is one of the bedrooms. And again, every window is unfinished. Left like that, the windows were just put in and taped. And these again are paper blinds. And those are unfinished windows. There is that HVAC system, the start of it up in the ceiling there, but of course it's not working. So now uh, we have to have extra fans, as you've probably heard already and can see, just to get some circulation in these units because since they put the tarps up, there's been no circulation and the air in here is musty, smelly, moldy. Again, we're not currently living in this because it is unlivable and management's refusing to do anything about it. And to repeat, this is Red Door Housing Society. When I first moved here, this society was what I felt to be one of the better organizations in the world. They were housing single parents, uh, primarily single moms, a lot of single dads too. Uh, and they were a great organization up until about 15 years ago, something changed, funding stopped. Uh, the executive director of Red Door Housing flat out told me in person that BC Housing was no longer funding maintenance and that they were actually actively pursuing a strategy of not responding to maintenance requests. And this is something I heard on record. Eventually I'll probably have to sign an affidavit to that, which I likely will. But again, this is all just for evidence, for proof. Anyone who's watching, you're just bearing witness to something I'm logging on purpose. Uh, I have sent pictures of all of this that you see to the uh, city inspectors, bylaw inspectors, and Brad Marsh, who is in charge of the permit for all of this work, uh, along with his assistant, Elizabeth Delaney, have flat out basically told us that there's nothing wrong with us living in these situations. I'll show you again the electrical panel exposed <laughs> and that the permit is going along just fine. Uh, I have asked them about mold issues, health issues, they're not referring us to any other bylaw inspectors. They've pretty much just stonewalled us, um, told us there's nothing they can do, and left us to our own devices. So again, I want to call that out because uh, as far as the class action goes, we need to document all of the government organizations we have reached out to for assistance because these are not livable conditions uh, for anyone, especially with people with disabilities. Uh, my neighbor, um, who is a single mom, has a disability herself and a son, are expected to move all this furniture, as you've been seeing how it's all been moved over and over and over again on their own. It's actually caused them a lot of pain, a lot of hardships. Again, I've had, I have a lot of good resources. So my daughter and I, we've taken care of ourselves, but the reason I'm fighting and the reason I'm here and the reason I'm taking this live video is I was those single parents once. I was without help, without resources, living on my own with kids. And I'm even actually going to cry because it's hard to live like that. And I'm no longer in that circumstance, but I am looking at this and thinking, you know, if I was on my own again with no help and no resources, this is what I would be expected to live with for six months, 12 months or more, because purely punitively they've stopped work because... I have been requesting that our rights be respected and that my daughter's disability be accommodated. And this is what they've done in, retro, you know, in retaliation to me speaking up. I told them from the beginning I wouldn't be bullied and I told them I wouldn't be intimidated. I don't think they think I meant it. Uh, I have lots of documented proof of being yelled at, being harassed, being told I'm aggressive. Um, basically the the construction, the head of Signia, who is actually the construction team doing this work, told me that they didn't like me. This was after only meeting them once. So anyway, needless to say, I think I've documented, I've shown all of the places of disarray in this unit. Shouldn't be lived in. But this is also being expected to pay full rent at this point in time, what you're seeing here. Full rent. It's going to be sitting like that for six months, probably falling into more disarray, disrepair, because holes in the ceiling just left open. Moisture from cooking is going to get up in there, up into the attic. More holes. None of this is closed. And it's all been left. And I have not been given a date for completion.
I basically told them that they can come in anytime and complete it because I've relocated my daughter at my own expense. Um, but they are basically refusing. Again, I think it's punishment because I've spoken up, I've spoken my mind. Anyway, I need to end this. I need other to get onto other things. Um, I'll finish with again stating that my daughter and I are in safe environment. We are not living in here right now. I relocated us a while ago when my daughter started to have myoclonic seizures when they were working in the attic. I'm actually going to just quickly show you that and keep get that on record. Um, they were putting spray foam into the attic. Um, that toxic spray foam, you could research it. Uh, they didn't let us know they were going to be doing this. And the attic is right here, the hatch. It's not sealed. It's right above us here. And when my daughter and I were sleeping in these rooms, right here, yeah, there's a hole in her ceiling too. At about 7 a.m. in the morning, we heard them up there in full PPE. Mind you, they're all in masks and full outfits. And they were in the attic, disturbing all the mold up there, putting this, this spray foam in, and my daughter started to have myoclonic seizures. I ran outside to get them to stop doing what they were doing because, of course, I was not informed of this. And that was when I was subject to a verbal assault. I do have that on video. I have proof of that. That was when I was told that I, they didn't like me and that I was aggressive. Um, and ironically enough, that same construction worker is the one who told my daughter, if ever we're doing anything that's upsetting or causing you stress, come out and tell us and we'll stop immediately. So this has been the game. And... I'm not a victim anymore. I'm just refused to be. So I've done what I needed to do to keep us safe. But I need people to know. BC Housing, BC Housing, BC Housing. Red Door Housing Society is getting funding from BC Housing. So essentially, BC Housing is funding slumlords at the moment. Because most landlords wouldn't be able to get away with this. We can't go to the residential tenancy branch because BC Housing is funding Red Door Housing. So we have no protection here. And the bylaws, city bylaws, Brad Marsh, Elizabeth Delaney have basically told me in writing they're not interested, don't care. They're not even investigating. They haven't been into the units. They haven't looked. They don't care. They just say that the project's going ahead as they've been told it is by management, of course. Um, they also told me that they had spoken to me twice and then the issue was solved and I had never been spoken to. So a lot of fishy things going on. A lot of fishy things. So again, for the record... On my Facebook page, I'll be downloading this video, but if anybody has any questions, um, feel free to ask. If you're living in BC Housing, Red Door Housing Society Complex, let me know. Uh, I can provide you information to the class action lawsuit that's happening right now. And I'm gonna end with that picture again because that's just gotta be the best one of all. Exposed wiring, and how can that not be a fire hazard <laughs> in some strange land? Okay, I'm done. I have to get somewhere else right now. Thank you for those who have joined and are watching. But uh, again, this is just for documentation purposes for an upcoming class action lawsuit against BC Housing and the conditions they're expecting tenants to live in. And my situation isn't even the worst. There's got to be a lot more. And people who've had to live through this, who haven't spoken up, who have not said, no, you're going to stop this now. They've had to live through it. And a lot of people are suffering and a lot of people are in distress here. And wherever they go, they're basically doors are closed. No help, no help, no help. So because I have the resources, I have the ability, I have the um, articulation, I have the experience in writing, I'm taking it upon myself to do a lot of this work on behalf of those who are going to be stuck here for a lot longer, who don't have the means to get out just yet. You know, it's a pretty sad situation. So awareness is needed. Thank you all for watching. I'm going to carry on with my day now and this part is done. Thanks a lot.